On this month's Speed News, we talk about the championships at Mid-Ohio, the United States Touring Car Championships who race with the WTCC guys from Europe, Ford Mustang FR500S, and the GoPro Hero Move of the Month. Welcome to Speed News, the National Auto Sport Association's video news magazine with hosts Rob Kreider and John Lindsay, joined by an ever-changing group of NASA members and staff. Speed News keeps you up to date on all of the happenings around the NASA motorsports world. Because at NASA, we drive harder. Hello, I'm your host, Rob Kreider, and welcome to the October edition of Speed News. I have my co-host, the man behind the man, that's John Lindsay. How you doing, John? Doing great, Rob. How are you? I'm doing great, and our guest host this month is Will Falls. He is the NASA National Event Director, and he is fresh back from the NASA Mid-Ohio Championships. How was that, Will? It was a, a great event. You know, we uh, uh, Mid-Ohio in September is always a little bit hit or miss for weather, and it held out for us for the most part, and we had uh, almost 400 entrants racing over uh, four days straight and, uh, and crowned uh, 35 new NASA national champions, and uh, it was a, a great event, great door-to-door -door racing, uh, new lap records and time trials, and, uh, and new NASA national champions, so that's really exciting, and our last one at Mid-Ohio for now, uh, and we're looking forward now to uh, heading to uh, Miller next year. Now, I saw some great podium shots from Mid-Ohio, and it looks like a lot of our winners were picking up a brand new suit from Royal Purple. Tell us about that. Yeah, Royal Purple and OG Racing were kind enough to sponsor us with 10 uh, brand new Sparco suits branded uh, with Royal Purple uh, embroidery. And, uh, and anybody who uh, won their class and had Royal Purple stickers on their car was eligible. And it, uh, it came down to uh, 10 racers that were awarded these uh, beautiful new Sparco uh, Royal Purple racing suits. Those things look good. Now, besides Royal Purple kicked down an awesome suit, Toyo Tires kicked down a ton of money to a lot of our spec classes. Uh, talk about that. What did they get uh, at the national championships? Man, Toyo Tires kicked in a ton of money uh, just for the classes that were built specifically for uh, that run on the Toyo RA1 this year. Uh, spec Miata alone had over $10,000 awarded to the uh, top five guys. So lots of money there and a uh, big thanks to Toyo for uh, being our title sponsor for, for that event. Very impressive. Now, in the uh, August edition of Speed News, uh, John and I went ahead and went, it got together and we talked about who we picked to win the actual uh, races. So uh, right now, what's the score right now, John? How are we looking? Uh, I'm not doing so good, Rob. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I think I'm uh, 0 for 1 this year, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, Chris Cabetto got into a little bit of trouble in the race, uh, kind of lost a little, uh, little body work there. And, uh, you know, he uh, ended up, I think, uh, 14th, 15th, something like that. So next year, uh, you know, everyone knows not to have me pick them to win a national championship because it's kind of a curse. <laughs> yes, I agree. Uh, unlike yourself, John, I picked a winner. I picked Emilio Cervantes <laughs> to pick PTC, and he's a big winner. So <clears throat> next year, you're looking for Rob Kreider to pick you to win, and you're not looking for the curse. John Lindsay to pick you to win. So, and we have a photograph here of Cabello's car and uh, not looking so good after the race, got a little rear bumper problem. And uh, of course, you have a picture here of Emilio uh, slamming into an Acura as he makes the pass for the lead there at Mid Ohio. So it was an awesome event. We had a great time there. But you know, before we let Will off the hook here, he did a great job of the Nationals. We had a great time there. But uh, I snaked the photograph off of his Facebook page and it is so <laughs> full of win. There are so many things about this photograph that I love. And uh, Will, why don't you tell us what's going on here with the bowl cut and the, uh, the Hot Wheels and this gorgeous chick from, it looks like the uh, mid eighties there. Yeah, thanks Rob. You know, that, that picture is really special to me for uh, so many reasons, but uh, particularly, uh, obviously I'm a young lad in that picture. And uh, every one of us involved in this wonderful world of motorsports has a reason why we're here. Somehow, uh, everybody has some way that they got into motorsports. And uh, I was lucky enough to be born into it. What we're looking at there is a zoomed in shot of what was a booth for my father's shop at a, uh, at a car show in downtown Sunnyvale. And uh, that's his 68 uh, GT500. Uh, behind us at a booth, you can get a little glimpse of the of our uh, of his shop banner there hanging, and um, 
And, uh, and that's how I got my start in motorsports. I was lucky enough to have a dad that had a shop and he ran a race team that ran uh, several years with uh, NASA. And uh, that, about that age is when I started coming to NASA events. And uh, that year is actually the first year I raced kid carts competitively. I got moved up from my uh, big wheel because you can see there, I, I got the trophy girl for that one. So <laughs> <laughs> lucky enough to, uh, to move up into, uh, into wheel to wheel racing from there and have always had the support of my father and, and his resources to, uh, to be here. And now I'm, uh, I'm making a career in motorsports and feel very, very lucky to do so. And, uh, and that, that's an early glimpse of of how it started, which is why that's special to me. Now there's a rumor that that's not just a 12 volt power wheels. That's actually a 24 volt upgrade. Is that true? Yeah, you know, it was, uh, it was built within the limits of the rules. That's all I can say. At this point. <laughs> what worries me about it is with all the hairspray in that lady's hair, if that thing sparked, uh, on the, she's sitting right on the batteries in that thing, poof, <laughs> napalm is all I can say, man. You're right. Safety is, uh, safety is paramount, which is why she had, uh, uh, you know, all the precautionary uh, safety gear on there. <laughs> yeah, no, I can see she's got definitely the strap on there. So, uh, John, you got to look at the picture. What do you think of it, man? Well, I think one of Will's friends on uh, Facebook put it best uh, in the comments there, and it was like a boss. I mean, really, that is, uh, that is quite a photo. And uh, uh, Rob, I believe that's all, also right up your alley, because I remember something about February of 1989 being a special time for you uh, in uh, certain kinds of publications. So, yeah, Will, yes, I, I recognize her there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and Will's kind of also soft pedaling a little bit because he was NASA's, uh, I believe, first team driver uh, in our competition program. So Will has really been involved with us for a long time, and we're so proud to have him now as the national event manager. And also, he didn't mention he's also my assistant chief divisional director. So he wears a lot of hats, and uh, you can see how it got started here at a car show in Sunnyvale. That is awesome. All right, we're going to jump here from mid-Ohio all the way to Sonoma on the West Coast. and we come back from the first break, we're gonna talk about the United States Touring Car Championship who raced with the World Touring Car Championships at Sonoma. State your desires. Speed, adrenaline, competition. Calculating result in three, two, one. The National Auto Source Association. Start here. Welcome back to Speed News. We had the opportunity to go out to Sonoma Raceway and see the United States Touring Car Championship guys run with the World Championship guys, which is a great experience, and we put together a little video here for you. So let's go to our NASA Vision 6000 and check it out. Hey, it's Rob Cry with Speed News. We're here with... Uh, Ali Arsham, and we're here with the Nitto Tires United States Touring Car Championships. We're here at Sonoma Raceway during the World Touring Car Championships. And Ali is the uh, United States Touring Car Championship Director for NASA. So, Ali, tell me about this weekend and uh, the series. Uh, well, uh, we were invited to come run here with the World Touring Cars, and we're like, they're, they're like our big brothers here. So, you know, this is most of the drivers aspire to reach that level one of these day, one of the days in the future. So, so we're, we can't be happier to be here as part of the big show. There's a lot of people out here watching us, and uh, there's tons of international media watching us. People worldwide, you know, we're getting people from you know all over the world, from Europe, Paris, places like that, you know, checking us out. So it's really exciting. So normally uh, the Nitto Tire United States Touring Car Championship runs with NASA, but this weekend obviously it's a marquee event to be running with the World Touring Car guys. We talk about the ultimate media, but uh, not only that, but we're talking about Menu, Tarkini, Huff, some of the best drivers in the world. And uh, we're going to be on the t track with these guys at the same time. It's got to be a big deal for you guys. It is a huge deal. And a, lo and a lot of those guys, you know, probably started out doing local touring car things. But, but the goal here is to have touring car championships from all over the world unite and have a common formula. And that's kind of what we're trying to do here is, is so that people can move up the steps and go. Because right now, if you win the championship in U.S. touring car, you get a free test with world touring car in Europe. And last year's champion, Brandon Krauss, went and did that. He finished sixth in a touring car race in Monza, Italy, and showed that, hey, you know, U.S. drivers can drive well, too, and can compete with the best in Europe. That was really exciting. So that's a big deal. So not only are you guys running events for people in America, but you have a ladder system set up to obviously go. Brandon Krauss went to Europe. 
that's the enormous advantage for this series. Now, I know you'd work really hard with the uh, U.S. Touring Car to make sure that it's kind of a more professional level event. So what things are you doing this weekend to kind of add to that? Well, we're, we're, we're trying to, basically, since we know a lot of the drivers in the U.S. Touring Car are trying to become pro professional drivers, so we're trying to take them from club racing level and teach them how to be professional racers, teach them to have a team atmosphere, and to have to how spons you know, sponsors and marketing is a huge aspect. You know, you can't just race in your garage. It doesn't matter if you, if you build a car in your garage, but you have to be professional about it, about how you go about doing things. So you must have, you know, use it, Facebook, use so social media, Twitter, have PR people, talk to the, me, me and members of the press, all, there's all kinds of that side, the marketing side of it, which is huge if you want to do this, because if you just want to pay for this out of your own wallet, you, unless you're filthy rich, you're not going to be able to achieve it. Gotcha. Now, now, of course, there are the filthy rich ones who just rent the ride and they go in, but most people can't do that. Hey, I'm here with T&I Racing. They are currently leading the points championship for the Nitto U.S. Touring Car Championships, and I'm here with the team owner, Ron Valtiera, and the driver, Felipe Cabeza, and uh, so you got a three-car effort here at the World Touring uh, Championships in Sonoma, so tell me about your week. Um, it's been an eventful week so far. Our drama seemed to have started actually last month at the last race at Thunder Hill with the, with the fire in this car, and then uh, yesterday with the uh, head-on almost collision in, uh, to uh, uh, wall at 3A yesterday in the red car. So uh, I saw this thing leave the paddock yesterday on a trailer, and now it came back straight as an arrow today. So how'd that happen? We took it to our sponsor, American Canyon Collision Center, last night. Uh, God, I think we got there about 7.30 last night, and we left it at the shop. Uh, he put it on his rack. He got it all straightened out. And uh, by 8 o'clock this morning, Joel, uh, the owner of American Canyon Collision Center, came in. He had it done and ready for us by 8 o'clock this morning. Um, we got it back here, put the radiator, everything back together, and we missed qualifying by just a mere minutes, just mere minutes. So you got this car fixed, but how did you fix this motor from the car fire just uh, the last race? Um, T our friends, uh, AJ's Performance In-Frame Tuning and our other friend at TEM Machine, uh, Rich, uh, took some uh, spare motors that we had. They put them back together. Uh, AJ removed put a new one in. We had some struggles with that engine. We had to take another one out, put it back in. It's been on the dyno. I think it's uh, probably had more time on the dyno at his shop than it has on the track. <laughs> so it's safe to say you're not just lounging around the motorhome this weekend. You guys have been busy with the cars. Oh, absolutely. Last minute effort on this. It's never say die here. Cool. All right, Felipe, so you're currently leading the points in the championship, so congratulations for that. Thank and uh, let's talk about this weekend. How's it going with the marquee event with the World Touring guys here? Uh, so far, so good. It's uh, it's really nice to be with these guys out here. It's a different uh, level of, of racing, so it's good to see their equipment, see the other classes, AutoGP, the Maserati cars. But uh, we're doing the best we can right now. We're struggling a little bit with the setup. Our Mazda Speed 3 is uh, it's close, but we just need, we're missing a little bit. But hopefully we can get some testing in before the last two races of the year and, uh, you know, and get closer. We're leading by about, I think, over 30 points right now. So hopefully we can, you know, stay ahead of the guys that are that are closest to us, and uh, hopefully, you know, um, you know, podium again. But uh, it's looking a little tough this weekend, to be honest. But um, you know, it's a 30-minute race, and anything can happen. So hopefully we can, uh, you know, we can be on the podium and uh, represent our sponsors well and have a good weekend. All right, I'm here with Ken Kurtz. He's currently leading the GT class for the Nitto Tire United States Touring Car Championship, and besides uh, racing his built F body here, Yokohama sponsored car. Uh, he also is the jack of all trades at NASA, isn't that correct? Yes, that's correct. I do just about every job function for NASA there is, from officiating to safety crews, you name it, I do it. Right on. Now, obviously, uh, we usually run the United States Touring Car Championship with NASA, but this weekend's a marquee event with uh, this series, with running with World Touring Cars. So what's that mean for your team? Oh, it's, it's an exciting moment to, you know, obviously put our car out in front of a, you know, a crowd. Uh, it's it's a, huge, a huge honor to be able to come out here and do this. And... So I'm, I'm really excited. And uh, from a standpoint for my sponsors and my partners, you know, being able to give them this kind of visibility is, is huge, right? You know, in, in the club racing world, being able to get out in front of, you know, into the pro series world and provide them that type of visibility is just uncom you know, un unparalleled. Now you got some monster horsepower in this car. What's the number? What's the official number these days? Uh, the admitted to number or the real number? No. Uh, the admitted to number. No, the real number is it, it'll make 725 horsepower and puts about 627 horsepower at the wheels. And all that wheel is going through these uh, Yokohama tires here, I guess, right? All that power? Yeah, yeah, it goes through the uh, Yokohama tires, and we're, uh, you know, it's actually pretty light on the tires. I mean, these, these tires, surprisingly enough, I can get nine, 10 sessions out of uh, heat cycles wise, and they just keep performing. They don't give out on me. So um, I'm just, I'm 
more than pleased with uh, the Yokohama tires. Now, due to the marquee uh, event, a lot of big guns have showed up for this particular event. And uh, so, how's that going to work out for your championship lead? Well, um, you know, it's always a challenge when you have uh, very top-notch drivers. You know, VJ uh, came out with his BMW, and, and first off, he's a he's a pro driver, runs the Grand Am series. He's a phenomenal driver, and then match that with a phenomenal car. So I've got my you know got my hands full and my, uh, work cut out for me today. Uh, we're just a few tenths apart on the qualifying laps. Um, he's P1, I'm P2. So. I think it'll be a good race. I, I, I think I can beat him, but it's going to be a challenge. It's going to take some work. And you got Alan Blaine crewing for you this weekend, uh, keeping the Steph body together. I see he's already fixing some stuff after qualifying. So what's the story there? Actually, we're just doing a lot of PM stuff. There's uh, We came out of qualifying. Nothing was wrong. We're, we're going through and nut and bolting. Uh, we just did a bl uh, brake bleed um, just because I felt a little bit of sponginess in the pedal. Um, just want to bring everything up and make it solid for the race. All right, doubleheader weekend here at the World Touring Car Championships. Well, Rob, that looks like that was a great time out there at, uh, well, Sears Point, Speedway Sonoma, whatever it is uh, th this week, I think. But uh, you mentioned U.S. Touring Car there. That's a series that we've had for a long time, uh, kind of a semi-pro or actually pro series for NASA. Uh, Ollie Arsham, one of NASA's original founders, has been in charge of that forever. And Will, you know a, a great deal about USTCC, so why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, USTCC, just like Ollie mentioned in, in that clip, just there is uh, is a great stepping stone for uh, for guys with touring cars uh, to go from the club level uh, to learn how to get that professional exposure. He does a great job uh, requiring teams to give themselves good vision through social media and websites and, and marketing tools and such. And uh, and you'll notice they're they're uh, they're one of the uh, series at the club level. Uh, I guess you could call it semi-pro level that requires um, requires all their crew to have matching uniforms and such and be in the pits uh, uh, during the races, which isn't a common thing at uh, at club level sprint races. And and they do all types of different interesting formats to really expose the racers to to how things can be switched up at pro events and 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 be flexible and uh, and beautiful uh, cars. Uh, any any touring car field, you know, gets any any uh, road racer excited and it's always exciting to watch and um, and awesome to see that they had a great event uh, running parallel to World Touring Car uh, right here in our backyard in Sonoma. Yeah, great series. Now we uh, gave Will a little bit of gas in the previous segment about a picture that we dug up of him. Well, we just happened to have dug one up of Rob here and uh, Rob, it looks like you've, uh, you've found some new friends there at the races. Uh, it's not all just hard work for you, is it? Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, John. Uh, now that you've shown that, I can never go to the races again because my wife uh, will probably see this photograph and wonder <laughs> what I'm doing there. Uh, what you can see there is I'm standing there with uh, five girls from the uh, World Touring Car. Um, that's Lisa, 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 and Lisa. And uh, the third Lisa from the left is my favorite. Uh, uh, they were very nice. And all I can say about that photograph is, um, well, it's good to be a race car driver, man. It's good to be the king, Rob. It's good to be the king. Will, do you ever get a, a lot of pictures like that at the racetrack? No, you know, I, I, I spend most of my time in the control tower, so uh, I'm, I'm not fortunate enough to have any uh, pictures like that since I was six years old. Uh, there you go. That's, <laughs> that, that's the right answer. Will Falls, the hardest working man in motorsports. <laughs> you know, in fact, the woman that's sitting on Will's car is actually the mother of the girl second from the left <laughs> in my photograph there, so... <laughs> Oh, boy. You recognize the blonde hair. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> All right, gentlemen, that's going to wrap up this segment. We're going to take our next break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Ford Mustang FR500S and the GoPro Move of the Month. Welcome to another episode of Racing No Filter. Joining me in sunny California, Bill Wood, and down in sunny Florida, Peter Keith. We're gonna take a look at some of the products HPD has created for the 2012 Honda Civic. And specifically, we're gonna show you an install and adjustable sway bar. Until then, folks out there, you take care. Welcome back to Speed News. 
Well, with the national championships this year, one of the great races that happened was the American Iron Race, and some of those Ford Mustangs were in that class were actually the Ford Mustang FR500S, which was basically a factory race car you could buy turnkey from Ford. It was also a school car at Miller Motorsports Park, and uh, now guys are buying them up. Some are collecting them, some are racing them, and John, uh, one finish on the podium, didn't it? It's true. Bruce Byerly, actually, his car is a FR500S that raced in the Miller Challenge, the Mustang Challenge that they had. And yeah, it was a little rough when he got it, but he fixed it up. And you can see, even in uh, AI, very competitive class that the uh, 500S is able to hold its own. Uh, there's still some of them out there floating around. You can't buy them new from Ford anymore, but there's a number of them were, that were made. I think uh, 77 cars were made of the 500S model for that Challenge Series. And they're great cars for NASA racing because you can go American Iron, you can go Camaro Mustang Challenge with them. And they're well built right out of the box. And you can do uh, any kind of racing you want with them, even track days. Uh, the Miller Motorsports uh, High Performance Driving School, the Ford Racing School up at, uh, up at Miller uses those cars. And uh, Will, you had a chance to evaluate that school and spend some time in a 500S. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? I did, man. And first of all, I love the look of these cars. Very iconic to the uh, 60s and 70s Trans Am racing. You know, Ford did a great job with the, the retro look of these cars. But as far as how these things run, they're nothing short of, uh, of modern beasts. I mean, I got to flog on these things for four days straight. And, uh, and, and, and they're great school cars because they're so bulletproof. They, they just get beat on and abused in school and high performance driving type stuff. And, uh, and they just keep running day after day after day. Like uh, we saw uh, the school talking about how they haven't had to replace a single motor yet. And, uh, and, and they just get beat on at the school. And uh, they're such a good car to drive, about 320 horsepower, uh, rear wheel drive, live axle. I mean, that's just super fun to drive. And, uh, and, and the fact that it's a really tough, strong car makes it a great platform to, uh, to go racing with. Uh, or or use as a school car as they are currently being used in up at uh, Miller Motorsports Park. I'll tell you, I got a lot of respect for guys who are actually buying these cars and racing them. So I know that some of these cars have been taken and they're going to be collectors now. Someone's going to put them in their living room or barn or whatever. And I understand that concept of it. But I have a lot more respect for the guy who actually buys the car, use it for what it was made for, and just beats the living hell of it uh, around uh, mid-Ohio at the Nationals. That's fantastic. All right, that takes us to our next segment. We're going to talk about the GoPro Move of the Month. John, why don't you walk us through a video we got here from the National Championships in Spec Miata. You bet, Rob. What we have here is a little in-car shot from John Mueller, who is our Spec Miata National Director. Also runs WeekendRacer.com, does a lot of sponsorship for us. Also, uh, EnduroRacer.com. He uh, sponsors a lot of our Enduro programs, the Western Endurance Racing Challenge, uh, which I know you're involved in, Rob. But this is a shot from Mid-Ohio and uh, really shows some traffic management and a little bit of luck. So we'll head to our NASA Vision 6000 consoles here and we'll hit play and watch John come through the carousel. So as you can see here, and a lot of traffic in front of him, trying to find a hole there and uh oh, some starting to happen up front. Oh, cars everywhere. Whoa, whack. Oh, wow. And he got through. So John basically right there passed seven cars in one corner and got through pretty much unscathed. So. Again, that's our Hero Move of the Month, uh, GoPro Hero Move. John Mueller in the number 13, I believe, weekend racer car. Getting through traffic, no problems at all. So what are you thinking, guys? Is that the Hero Move of the Month or the luckiest move of the month? I think it might be the Lucky <laughs> Bastard Move of the Month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you, those Spec Miata guys, they run close together. That's no question about that. Uh, there's no series that I've ever seen that gets so close as these guys do. And uh, he's definitely splitting some traffic in that video. And then uh, goes to total mayhem. And, uh, you know, I talked to John about it. He won't admit it, but I think his eyes were closed, honestly, when he went through the two, uh, two wreck cars there. <laughs> kudos, kudos to John there for getting through there unscathed. Good, good job and uh, well-deserved uh, GoPro move of the month for John there. Absolutely. Moved up. He moved up the standings big time in that move. All right, that wraps up the October edition of Speed News here on GoRacingTV.com. If you want your video to be part of the GoPro move of the month, Send it to speednews at drivenasa.com. I want to thank John and Will for hanging out, and we'll see you next month here on goracingtv.com.